Hello, my name is Richard Izzo and I work for the Soils and Aggregates section of the Materials and Test Division. I'm going to present about the 2024 standard specification changes for the 200 series items. This is for subgrade treatments and base. I'm going to start with the new items that we added to the 200 series. This includes item 250, for geogrid base and reinforcement. This includes item 290 for emulsified asphalt treatment road mixed. This includes item 291, foamed asphalt treatment road mixed. And lastly, item 295 for ultra high pressure water cutting treatment. Those are the items that we've added. The items that we have removed from the 200 series includes item 263 a lime treatment plant mix. We had let two projects under the 2014 specification and both were change ordered to zero quantity. We've also removed item 265, fly ash or lime fly ash treatment road mix. Eight projects were let under 2014 specification. And the latest project let was in March 2021 and most of those were change orders and also fly ash supplies limited. Something new that we've added uh, is random density and moisture testing locations. This has been added to all embankment soils and base specification items. This stemmed from an FHWA stewardship review such that they mandated that TxDOT include this in our 2024 specifications. Anything used for acceptance must come from a random location. How is it going to work? Contractor provides the engineer with the beginning and ending station numbers of the area completed. The engineer will determine the width and the random testing location in accordance with TEX 115-E part 4. This is a new test procedure. I'm sorry, this is a new part of the test procedure. And that's published online. When the density is less than specification requirement, the engineer may perform additional testing to determine the extent of the area to correct. More information is provided online. We have posted a, a Teams meeting in which we discuss this topic throughout uh, the districts. We've added uh, miscellaneous and small areas to each item 200 series. We've added this to all base specification items. Miscellaneous areas are those that typically involve handwork or discontinuous paving operations. These may be temporary detours, driveways, crossovers, or similar areas. Miscellaneous and small areas are not subject to density testing, but may be tested as directed. So those are two things that we've added to all of the 200 series specifications. Okay, item 204, sprinkling. We have changed the reference of the unit of measure from MG, which was confused or mistaken for megagallons to TGL, which is for 1,000 gallons. We had only editorial changes for item 210 rolling and for item 216 proof rolling. Item 247 for flexible base. The unconfined compressor strength may be waived for grade 1-2. Unless otherwise shown on the plans, the strength, the unconfined strength may be waived when the base meets a number 200 sieve requirement. The number 200 sieve requirement has been added to the material, material requirements in Table 1, and we'll show that in the next slide. When the number 200 sieve requirement does not meet, the unconfined compressive strength is required. And this only pertains to grade 1 2 base. The 200 sieve requirement is only applicable to stockpile samples. And as you can see in the table, 85 to 95% retained or 5 to 10% passing is the requirement. The compressive strength and the number 200 sieve requirements are waived when treating the flexible base with asphalt, cement, or lime, unless otherwise shown on the plans. 
grade three may be substituted for grade one dash two or five when treating with an additive. However, they must meet the wet ball mill requirements of the substituted grade. And this information is addressed in the notes, as you can see highlighted, notes one, two, and three. Recycled materials. We removed language referencing department furnished recycled materials. This applies to recycled materials supplied by the contractor when shown on the plans. The final product <clears throat> must meet the requirements in table one or the material requirements for the grade specified, except when the department requires department furnish wrap, unless otherwise shown on the plans. Stockpile approval. This is a new section that has been added and has two subsections, and they include one for sampling and the second for referee testing. Sampling, the contractor and the engineer will sample flexible base from completed stockpiles at the same time. The contractor will witness the engineer sampling and sample the stockpile for their own testing. The contractor may sample the stockpile for the engineer when shown on the plans, and the engineer must witness the sampling. Referee testing. The materials and test division is the referee laboratory and only applicable for stockpile testing. MTD may designate an approved laboratory as the referee laboratory as deemed necessary. Laboratory cannot be performing any testing under this item for the engineer or contractor. The contractor may request referee testing when the engineer's test results fail to meet any of the material requirements and the contractor sample for the same failing department test passes. Density and moisture control. The requirement for the contractor to measure moisture content and report the results the same day to the engineer has been removed. However, language has been added to direct the contractor to maintain moisture during compaction within 2% of the optimum moisture content from the moisture density curve. Ride quality. Reprofile and correct sections that fail to maintain ride quality before the pla placement of the surface treatment as directed. Unless ride deterioration is due to environmental impact, traffic, or other incidents outside the contractor's control, contractor must perform this work at no additional expense to the department as approved. Reworking base courses, item 251, editorial changes. And we've added the miscellaneous and small areas language. Item 260, lime treatment, road mix. When a dry application is required, quick lime must be supplied. When a slurry application is required, quick lime or commercial lime slurry is required to be supplied. Carbide lime slurry has been removed and has not been used for any 2014 lanes. Unconfined compressive strength of treated material has been added. We want to test the final product. It must be greater than 50 PSI for treated subgrade. It must be greater than 150 PSI for treated base or treated base mixed with existing material. However, these strengths may be different when shown on the plans. When flexible base is added, strength of the stockpile base is weighed. Item 275, cement treatment road mix. The unconfined compressive strength of treated material must be greater than 150 PSI, unless otherwise shown on the plans, such as lime, we wanna test the final product. When flexible base is added, strength of the stockpile base is weighed, unless otherwise shown on the plans. Ride quality. Ride quality has been added, however, it's only when shown on the plans. And the language is the same 
as what is under item 247 for flexible base. Item 276, cement treatment plant mix. No changes to unconfined compressive strength requirements have been made. The class L is still a minimum of 500 PSI. Class M is still a minimum of 300 PSI. And class N is as shown on plans. Strength of the stockpile flexible base, the four mixing is waived, unless otherwise shown on the plans. Under materials for the mixing plant, we've taken language and requirements from item 520, weighing and measuring equipment, and added them into, uh, into, into this item. We must equip plants with automatic proportioning and meeting, metering devices. We reference certified scales and scale installations. We address accuracy to be within 1% based on the average of three runs. This is for belt scales. We provide language that must provide personnel, facilities, and equipment for check and scales as approved. And all weighing and measuring equipment after each move and at least once every six months or when requested. Microcracking. It's only required when shown on the plans. This is not the default requirement and no changes have been made to the requirements. Item 292, asphalt treatment plant mix. We harmonize language with the 2024 item 341, hot mix asphalt specification. The product is the same. It's PG64 minus 22 mixed with aggregate in a hot mix asphalt drum plant. We've taken the sections listed in the slide and harmonize that language. So what you see as required for coring and sampling under item 341 will be the same as listed in this item. Recycled asphalt pavement. Unfractionated wrap has been removed. Fractionated wrap has been increased to a maximum of 35%. Mix design requires the mix design uh, as per text 204F part four, super paved mixture design procedure. The target laboratory mold density is from 96 to 97%. The number of gyrations is between 50 and 75. However, this may be changed to within 35 to 100 gyrations when approved. Grade three has been revised and it's applicable to one inch bond breaker mixtures such that the gradation is finer and there's a higher minimum asphalt content. Trial batch testing. The engineer will sample and test within one full working day. It's required to determine to measure the asphalt content, gradation, indirect tensile strength, and the laboratory mold density. Production testing. The engineer will sample and perform production tests. The laboratory molded density must be within 1% of the target laboratory molded density. The gradation of aggregate must be within 5% of the trial batch gradation and within the mass degrading limits. The asphalt content cannot be less than the minimum asphalt content required and not vary by more than half a percent from the optimum asphalt content determined from the mixture design. Placement sample, coring. Random locations are required for coring. Trimming, witnessing, and custody of cores is the same as the hot mix asphalt specifications. The minimum untrimmed core height Eligible for density testing is 1.75 inches. Bend bond breakers are not subject to coring and in place for air void requirements. Density control must contain 3.8 to 8.5% in place air voids. 
unless otherwise shown on the plans. In place air voids are determined from roadway cores. They're determined by measuring the bulk specific gravity and the theoretical maximum specific gravity, otherwise known, known as the Rice gravity. When air voids are not within acceptable range, the contractor must take immediate corrective action. The engineer may suspend operations or allow the contractor to continue operations for no more than one day while taking corrective action. The engineer may suspend operations if in-place air voids are not within acceptable range within one full working day of operation. Ride quality is only required when shown on the plans using surface test type A. 2014 specification requires surface test type A unless otherwise shown on the plans. It, it will no longer be the default. Thank you.